हे गाइज वेलकम टू सिनेमा वाली बातें विथ मी सिनेफाइल संकेत सो फॉर टूडेज एपिसोड आई हैव इन्वाइटेड अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट हो नेम इज निशा कालरा सो निशा मैम इज द राइटर ऑफ द रिसेंटली रिलीज नेटफ्लिक्स ओरिजिनल कॉल्ड भाग बिनी भाग एंड शी इज अ सिनेफाइल सो टूडे वी वी विल टॉक अबाउट द इंसाइट्स ऑफ फिल्म राइटिंग एंड सिनेमा इन जनरल Uh, so hello Nisha ma'am welcome to cinema wali baate the talks about cinema uh, so ma'am what have you been watching recently which films and uh, tv shows have been watching so i've been watching more shows than films actually because i'm working on a, on stru- like i'm working on two shows right now so i'm trying to surround myself with that structure i recently rewatched bojack even though i had seen it already but i just refinished it and i think it's the best show ever made like i'm still <laughs> the amount it's affected me on the second viewing even though i knew everything that was going to happen and i think the first time you see a thing you're still reacting to all of the plot of it so you're kind of in that i need to finish the episodes i need to watch it faster and like all of the jokes don't register but the second time that I, have you have you seen bojack uh, no actually i <laughs> i would admit it that i have seen just a pilot episode of it but like i don't know why but i just left the show uh, yeah It, i i know what you're saying a lot of the pilot is even the writer says that uh, if there was one thing he could change about the show if he went back he would change the pilot like we will keep calling oh. him after classes and all and they tell him you know what can we learn from your show and he says i wish i could teach you all things but don't look at season 1 look at the other things cuz i mean in his head obviously he was trying to make the best possible show but he keeps hearing this feedback of people saying no 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 stick with it you know it it gets really deep it gets really better which is true like a lot of us say that even i say that no it really picks up uh, as it was the end of season 1 and and beginning of season 2 and he he's aware of that so he talks about it as i that's not the best feedback <laughs> to get um but he has learned but, from that that's that's useful enough. but i think this happens in like uh, uh, the recent hbo and netflix uh, shows uh, as well so like i uh, the thing was i uh, like not recently but like uh, four years back i watched house of cards and like the first season was like super slow but the thing was it got picked up like the pace was picking up uh, after season 1 and season 2 like yeah. it was uh, getting uh, very fast and that's the reason like i uh, noticed this uh, like pace change and in uh, hbo of, uh, shows also and on an, uh, on netflix shows like uh, these kind of things happen like uh, yeah so yeah what and other uh, things uh, have you watched sorry just just to build on what you were saying i mean there are exceptions to that rule also like for like i think the good place or breaking bad are both shows that i would say or even please like me which i saw i would say the season 1 actually ends up feeling stronger than possibly the latter ones but some of the best sitcoms or some of my favorite sitcoms like parks and rec or the office even the season 1 the season season 1 are the weakest like parks and rec season 1 i saw and i left it for 3 years or 4 years cuz i just didn't care and then and then people forced me to come back to it and then i recently came back to that also even though like very late compared to the rest of the world and i was like this is so full of story it's so full or there are like three relationship arcs happening every character is completely different not completely different but really evolved by the end and you're like oh wow okay yeah shit's creek i think um i i really like shit's creek or really re- was such a perfect watch for the, for the quarantine but otherwise also i thought it was it had a lot of interesting and new things to say um but even dan levy talks about how uh, he feels like his show is almost like a it's like proof that networks should stick with shows because after the first season their ratings were really low and it was and i mean even i agree that the first season is really not their strongest um but for some reason the network allowed them to keep at it and the sixth season won how many emmys Imagine all the emmys all 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 the emmys i can't believe a show exists where all four actors won an emmy that's such a testament to the writing also i do believe i do believe shit's week is hinges a little bit more on its performances than its writing at least at least for me um but i mean the performances wouldn't exist if the writing wasn't there so I, it's insane actually but yeah like, he uh, said like, that's the reason you should stick to a show i think sitcoms and at least comedy shows they just take time if the whole purpose of it is that you want to you want to have people that you can kind of feel like your friends with that's why you watch a show right because you want to just like live with these people every day every day every day and that takes time to build i think through that yeah actually because of you uh, like uh, because of you i just started watching modern family and like i i don't know why but like uh, why do comedy 
uh, and sitcom shows like uh, make me cry i don't know why yeah like uh, th- like those are this is so dude mod fam has mod fam is so emotional i feel also i feel like the sitcoms that make you cry or affect you emotionally are the ones that that Oh, like you hold closer like bojack bro it's it's the saddest i, I don't even think bojack is a sitcom it, they call it a sad com and it should be called that only because it's so sad but you're right modern family has such a such powerful things to say about family like when i first watched it it was at a my family was in quite a mess at that time and i used to watch this show and be like oh is this what a relationship in a in a house is supposed to feel like oh this is what fathers are supposed to be like with their kids why are we getting vulnerable anyway but yeah i know what you're saying about um yeah sorry. actually like uh like i like i was just blown away that like how brilliant it is like uh, the fil- the fils the the father character uh, is the, like he's so sweet and like uh, sweet. <laughs> yeah uh, like i like, sorry, sorry go ahead yeah go ahead, you, you, oh, yeah like uh, i like i just like completely like just cried out like how great the show is and i actually on the fourth season uh, only i don't know Already? how it yeah i am actually on the fourth season fourth season yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah, it, it's just uh, like it's so nice like i am actually i can ha- watch the show um, while having some like a food and then like i also uh, like i watch the show and i'm just idle and like i don't know what to do but yeah. like it's it, it gives me like a uh, there are something like uh there's someone uh, who like uh, i i can like love connect uh, to yeah yeah connect to right it's the right i think so would yeah think so at the moment that made you cry i'll also share sorry? would you be willing to share the moment that made you cry or is that irrelevant to the conversation right now oh uh, no 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 so uh, the favorite. thing is uh, no actually uh, the uh, this episode uh Uh, actually it's phil's birthday and uh, like uh, he like no one uh, no yeah like no one uh, gave a fuck about like him uh, but because, like uh, his birthday and like his wife claire uh, forgot to bring uh, him an ipod okay. yeah. and like uh, his uh, his children were like uh, not giving a fuck i don't know but like uh, he just uh, uh, he just like uh, went away to a uh, zoo or i think a garden <laughs> and he attended a phil, uh, another phil's birthday and like i was just how how he, is he enjoying it like i was just like so sad that what what was yours so many so many there's so many moments between the father and the daughter there's that one moment in the, in the beginning of the show when when uh, haley haley breaks up with uh, um, dylan for the first time and he sits with her and i don't remember exactly what he says but he says something really sweet he says something along the lines of if it didn't hurt then then it wouldn't have if it's not hurting then it's not real something like that and you're going to face a lot of these and and like whatever you'll be fine i'm here and this and that there's also that dreamers and realists episode which always makes me cry when the i i'm such a realist in life but when that pumpkin goes all the way i feel like <laughs> oh yeah 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 that's the <laughs> halloween i think yeah 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 uh, uh, the pritchett was it uh, the others <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um so i mean i i'm not i can't even remember there are so many um but yeah these but are but also like uh, uh, like i wanted to ask you like since you are a writer of bini bhag uh, which like everybody knows uh, so uh, like as an as a writer when you watch uh, a show or a film what all bo- what all boxes are there like uh, to take that uh, this is a great show and sorry this is a great show or a movie like what all bo- boxes do you tick that's a really good question okay so i think see there's two parts to this question one is that i'm i'm like i'm just adding to your question myself only and saying that uh, there is one part of it where and you would also relate to this very much which is that once you become more involved in the making side of it there is a tendency like your brain kind of changes and you you your like your head starts thinking about the writing really quickly and there's a part of you that wants to just stop and just react to it as an audience and just react to it as a person and just have your emotional experience with it and then break it down later it's both so on some days you're like so happy that your writer brain has started thinking about it or whatever your filmmaking brain started thinking about it because because if it's a great movie then you're able to like 
be excited about how great it is by being aware of the things they've done to make it great but if it's not so good and you're able to see the flaws then you're like please be quiet let me just have fun i want to just uh, react so yeah i mean i want to say that the first thing that i look for is just whether it connected with me emotionally or whether it whether i felt like it's the the only rule is if it works it works right like ultimately it's just there can be flaws in it but if it worked it worked um i want to say that that's my answer but i'm not sure it is i want to be the person uh, it's okay to come become free of these these notions of craft and all but no i think to an extent there's a percentage of it where that's true where of some of it is just like you know what if i cried then I, then i liked it then you don't need to break it down any further than that cuz the the body already reacted by itself an involuntary reaction has happened same with laughter if i laugh then i had fun um but you will switch off the tv you will talk to your friends about it later and you will end up breaking it down so i can say that i am very much a stickler for structure i get really annoyed <laughs> when i feel like just the basics of craft are just not there because you feel like if you had just put if you had just structured it properly if you had just thought about emotional ordering a little bit it would have been better like as like with shows i feel this a lot where you feel like in 30 minutes or in 29 minutes there is a lot of story that can be covered but it's also difficult to cover that much story but once you've seen a show like parks and rec or once you've seen a show that like mod fam where there is so much ground being covered or bojack there is so much ground being covered in bojack in every minute they don't waste time on gags so then when you see a show that's like 20 30 minutes and it's not filling as much time story and it's kind of like just taking its own time to do its jokes and all you're i feel a little eh. even in terms of and with films there's a similar an equivalent that i can give for it which is structure related only where i feel like just some things not as rules it's not like i want you to just blindly follow like i've seen a lot of films where it feels like they've blindly followed hero's journey or they've blindly followed ki oh yahan pe third act aana chahiye that also doesn't work obviously um that also feels like no don't be dumb about it but but when they able to disguise it in a way that you can tell that this guy at least has some sense of what they're doing um so yeah structure i mean originality i think matters to me a lot i've started to realize that i think because i uh, i'm i'm from an advertising background and in advertising their whole deal is that they everything they make in advertising is with a view that no one gives a fuck about you or what you have to say so you have to make it that much more interesting so that i watch your ad like cuz you're they're pushing a pro sorry am i allowed to abuse on this no 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 it's okay it's okay like it's it's fine it's <laughs> it's a r rated show <laughs> um yeah like because if it's an ad then it's a like i don't care about your product i don't want to know what you have to say so the person making it has to work that much harder to make it interesting and engaging and entertaining for you or whatever accessible for you and that's a great rule to take away and use in films also where like in two sentences if you can tell me a thing that sounds really like fresh not i don't even, like not you just fresh um then then i think that 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 kind of does matter not that there aren't great show like it doesn't have to be premise you can be fresh through a new device that you've used you can be fresh through a new setting that you've put you can be fresh through a new tone or style or whatever voice that you've given it doesn't before sunrise is fresh they chose because the freshness it's a relationship it's two people talking but it's still fresh because it's they broke format like they did a new thing in terms of format even though the the world by itself might not be the most uh, unheard of space to be in or whatever it is um so yeah i think originality matters then truthfulness truthfulness matters a lot truthfulness is it can be argued that it's subjective it can be argued ki mere liye ye truthful tha but i think there is just one level of um, ek thoda soul ke level pe hai matlab pata chal jata hai ki isme sachai thi ki nahi ya ye likha gaya lag raha tha ki aise kuch bhi dal diya so truthfulness i think covers characterization and story beats and everything um so actually yeah. yo i think i feel yo uh, the the approach should be a fresh start like uh, there are many uh, romcoms or even like uh, romantic stories also like in the world uh, in in the uh, world of cinema but like what makes uh, a, a before a trilogy or even like a, a film uh, or eternal the punch drunk eternal sunshine yeah. rom-com, but like it's not a rom com it's a rom drama but sorry 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 i got you off go ahead yeah so like yeah uh, so like uh, uh, films like before trilogy or even like 
like films like uh, Notting Hill, I feel, and even uh, other films from uh, Richard Curtis. Uh, yeah. Like what? Like, they are, uh, his approach of saying the story that matters and um, actually yeah. that, that is uh, quite new and quite fresh uh, compared to other works. So I actually like adore him. Like uh, Richard Curtis movies are like love. Actually, I feel like it's I don't know. Oh, like I just uh, put my brain out and like just watched it. Like, yeah, just what is the happening? Like, just the prime minister is having ha- is having an affair and like what the fuck is happening? But like, it's so good. Yeah. I, like, uh, if it uh, yeah, actually, you, it's good. Ultimately, there's no need to break it down any more than that, right? But you will. Yeah, you actually, will break it down because you're still a person. <laughs> no, actually, like because of that film, like uh, I just like uh, came across the song, uh, like uh, all I want for Christmas, and like uh, every Christmas I just listen to that song, <laughs> just because of love. Actually, <laughs> that's, that's why. So sweet, and that's so true. Also, <laughs> a lot of music hits a lot more when it's been used in a in a memorable place in a in a film. But yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> But yeah, so like talking about like uh, you are a writer, you work in uh, the uh, the industry. Uh, so like uh, uh, before, like you launched your career in uh, Bollywood. Uh, before that, what were your masters like? Who was your sorry, who were your masters uh, in writing? Uh, and like what you liked about them? Like uh, what are the qualities and their writings you liked about? This is a really good question. Firstly, I mean they weren't. Not only before, like they are like masters oh, yeah, now yeah. also. Yeah, yeah. Um, masters keep changing. I think that's the thing. I find it really difficult to answer these questions about like who's your favorite writer, who's your favorite, what's your favorite show or something. Because I think I'm inherently very commitment phobic, and I feel really scared to. As soon as you say favorite, or as soon as you say master, you're like attaching your identity to it a little bit. So I feel like well, I might want to change it. Um, but I think. Two three people that just keep coming back. Uh, Pixar, honestly, for me, I keep <laughs> coming back to filmmaking. Honestly, it's it's a very it shocks me that I keep giving this answer because I do write animated stuff also and I do like really like it, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna pursue it like full 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 this thing. Uh, although if I get a job at Pixar, I'll pursue it. But yeah, <laughs> but, but I'm just saying Pixar has so much to teach us about filmmaking in general for all like for all people. You can use the things that they talk about for anything that you want to write. And they, the, their whole deal is about being truthful. Their whole deal is about being uh, as serving the emotion and serving the story above all else. Andrew Stanton spoke about this is one of my favorite anecdotes. And it's a it's a specific example. It's obviously not exhaustive, but it's a specific example about how they serve story above all else, regardless of how much money it costs them. Uh, okay, pause the understanding thing. Even for like, I don't remember which movie it was. I think it was Inside Out where they said um, two years into it, the writer was not, I don't remember if it was Inside Out or which one, but basically two years into it, the writer was not happy with what he had written. And you're supposed to have these feedback screenings with all the people um, who are, who are going to like, whatever, break down the story with you and everything. And uh, he came for the screening and he just didn't show it. He was like, it's not good. I don't like it. I'm not, I've been working on it for two years, but I don't like it. And he was like, you can fire me if you want. I totally understand. You should fire me. <laughs> okay. But they did. They were like, okay, what do you want? You want one more year? Fine. Take one more year. Go write it. And then he did. And the story would be so much better if I remembered which one it was. <laughs> because it's the one that ultimately won the Oscar, which is why I think it was Inside Out. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll message it to you and then you can put it in the description <laughs> link. Um, but just the fact that they allowed him to just chuck it and like start over. And the Andrew Stanton story was that after he wrote Wally, people were really happy about how he had taken a stand about the environment and he had, you know, said so many things about climate change and, you know, so many things to, to keep in mind. And, and he was, he, they, kept, they kept asking him questions about it. And at some point he was like, I'm really happy that you feel that way. And I'm really happy that it's done that for you. But that was not my intention. I, I wanted to write a story about the loneliest robot in the world. He'll be the only ro- robot in the world. He'll be the only robot in the world if everyone else doesn't exist anymore. Everyone else won't exist anymore if there's been a climate catastrophe. So that's why I was serving the story. I was not serving an agenda, which is a great takeaway for me. And I think one other, uh, I, I've spoken about this in the other video that I did with you only, but it's true for all of us, there are these work that I always keep coming back to, which is that, which a lot of other people also say, I, I read it in someone else's interview also recently, but I think it was uh, Bojack's creator only. Uh, 
about uh, just being as dialectic as possible there's no right or wrong you're just trying to you're just trying to depict the truest possible human experience as you can and you're just trying to give all possible perspectives and attack a theme from all possible directions you just you have an ideology a movie i think a lot of people and and including me i often approach a movie as it's my chance to say what i believe about the world but i think it requires some growth and maturity and time and rewriting to reach a point where i it's not what i want to say about the world it's this is a topic that i that multiple people have multiple different points of view on my point of view is one of them but i might have a completely contradictory point of view also and five other people that i spoke to had five contrary points of view also here is a summation of all of it <laughs> now do what you want <laughs> true that actually it's all true nothing is correct what is correct <laughs> everything is <laughs> actually like uh, i felt like uh, the same thing with wally uh, like i uh, <laughs> uh, in your class uh, you told us to watch wally and like uh, just two years later i am watching wally and like uh, oh wow what 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 the fuck just, just i uh, yeah. uh, watched you like i like, uh, to affect you that way there's such a belief that it's childish my... or immature but it's like there's a lot happening there i just love toy story the uh, like the entire uh, like not the trilogy but like uh, uh, the all the four movies uh, I, I, i have i am yet to watch the fourth movie but like i just love all the three movies oh, like how can uh, like they make me cry uh, the uh, the pixar movies like i haven't and actually uh, uh, to say i haven't watched a uh, uh up and inside out and all those great uh, movies like uh, even soul uh, for that matter i actually like uh, uh, soul is like remaining for me to watch but like i'll super soon watch a uh, uh, soul to uh, i'm heard that uh, pretty great things about uh, like uh, and pete doctor is like uh, i think pete doctor uh, just like uh, i uh, like uh, i heard his uh, oscar winning speech uh, that he he just told that uh, like Uh, from his like uh, second grade uh, math book uh, like uh, which he used to draw like how did like how the fuck did, did this happen uh, like from my, i was drawing uh, like the sketches uh, in my uh, uh, math second grade math book and yeah. can uh, can lead up to this like uh, yeah, the oscar like is... it was just awesome that's so nice <laughs> yeah that's the reason but yeah sorry just so, uh, uh, sorry just to answer your question yeah. uh, i spoke about in terms of film but also mike sure is one of my recent masters because i think he's reached how many good sitcoms has he made like i think he's just figured, he's made uh, the good, he's one of the creators of the good place he's worked on parks and Ma- michael wait wait, wait. Ma- michael sure is like i think uh, uh, the co-creator of brooklyn nine nine right yeah yeah brooklyn parks and rec and, and also 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 uh, uh, the guy who plays most in uh, the office Yeah. Uh, Dwight's brother, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. I think Greg Daniels and him created it, or Greg Daniels created it, but he was also a part of it. And then the Good Place also, and Parks and Rec also. How many? It's like <laughs> enough. Um, and and Phoebe Waller Bridge, obviously, and Ra- Raphael oh. Bob Waksberg also. I've been. Uh, who who uh, who is like I uh, like which uh, show has he created? Raphael. Oh, Oda. Oda Kaufman is Raphael. Oh, Phoebe okay. Fleabag, oh. Fleabag, and. Fleabag. Uh, um, Bojack is is Rafael, and he also made another show called Undone, which is also really really only one season of it is out, but it's a, it's in his own words, it's like a further explanation of the trippier episodes of Bojack, but thematically obviously very different. But in terms of animation style and stuff, they they retain that trippy stuff, and uh, it's kind of sci-fi, and it's uh, uh, I don't want to tell you anymore. It's about a girl and and a father daughter story, and it's really it's uh. Mm-hmm. Got it. Like you have uh, suggested it, so like I have to watch that show like uh, super soon. Like I have put. Uh, yeah. Since you asked the question of what it is about them that makes you uh, like whatever look up to their work uh, for Bojack, I would just like to say that um, he pitched the show as a single protagonist show, okay, and he very consciously when he was create he spoke about it when he was creating the rest of the characters in his writers' room. Um, they were all created. obviously as people but in a way that they'll serve bojack's arc okay they're meant to be functions of bojack's arc and imagine with this as your construct like within two to three or four seasons you've reached a place where every single one of these characters is so fleshed out that they have there are individual episodes dedicated to them where bojack doesn't even turn up and the show still works like how well have you fleshed out how many people it's a, it's like a 
serious masterclass in ensemble character writing and even like i really want to tell you I'll give you an example of this in terms of the finale of how they close i can i don't need to tell you the details i can just tell you that they wrap up every individual character's arc in a way that perfectly justifies their like presence like as them as that does just to them as people but all of those four arcs together serve bojack's arc also <laughs> like which is insane how well like intertwine does it have to be how much do you have to think how much do you have to talk for every like thing that happens to a character to ultimately come back and still be a function of that main arc but still stand by itself it's insane and it's so funny despite that like there's a whole gag stuff happening so yeah i i mean the way that they they he's able to manage the ensemble is insane but like uh, uh, another uh, writing question i just wanted to ask you so like uh, you write your stuff so like uh, like uh, like apart from writing like uh, what what's the toughest uh, uh, sorry what's the toughest part in writing like uh, uh, and like uh, uh, and like what was the toughest part in writing the bag bini bag also like uh, if i would say like I, if i would ask i think writing is the toughest part of writing it's so hard. <laughs> no it, it, also um, in bag bini bag too um i think with beanie one of the challenges there were i mean of course there are challenges on multiple levels and uh, uh uh we can keep getting into it also because in any co-writing setup there will be one element of that challenge of like how to find the best possible um thing out of all of these people's opinions and how to make everyone's think kind of manage but that's just true for all co-writing setups but specifically in terms of um the the content of the show i think one thing that uh, um we spoke of a lot was finding the balance between the drama and the comedy which is again why like a lot of for me personally as a writer i i'm really trying to veer towards the tragic comic space and find a way to like deal with really sad and intense things but also in a way that's funny and striking that balance is really difficult and i think beanie is not as sad and tragic but even with beanie we had that thing of how do we make sure that the comedy doesn't come at the cost of the story and then but then how do we also make sure that everyone's funny because it's a show about a comic it needs to be funny um and i think striking that balance was something that that we just kept trying to do and and hopefully we did something with it oh um, but yeah, yeah but, um but i mean the binia is a very specific example that's not the i mean the, your question was also what's the toughest part of writing in general this in general really also yeah example, i think in general i don't know can i think for 2 minutes what's yours <laughs> you right what's yours uh yeah i write actually i am ashamed to say but like i have made a, a short film by myself that's uh, amazing why are you ashamed of that you've made it that's so cool uh yeah but like it was awful uh, i actually like uh, i haven't posted it on it instagram it matters much more but sorry continue yeah like i haven't posted it on instagram i have i have not uh, like uh, uh, said it to anyone but like uh, i have just like uh, uh, send it to the people who matter like uh, just tell me your honest feedback and, like uh, the feedback i got like it was just like it wasn't uh, good uh, so some people you like gone from it right? i think it's amazing that you managed to send it to people even though you were feeling quite uh reserve or whatever shy about it or nervous about it oh. you send it to people and you learn things uh, from it that's great or oh, don't like uh, i uh, actually uh, the thing is uh, like with just when i shot the entire thing uh, like I, i was just like uh, uh, i was fucking scared like how uh, like how will i edit it like uh, uh, i got like no editing skill uh, skills as such but like how will i edit it like uh, then a friend told me like just just edit it and then like edit it and then i sent to all of my friends and like uh, it's okay it's <laughs> a post from it uh, it happens like it, 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 yeah i mean you edited it despite not knowing what the editing should be and i think now you have some more insights on what you should do so that's something to be proud of dude first few the first few i feel like in all of you know this is a good this is a good segue into what the answer to your question was i had thought of another answer also and i'll tell you both one is one is um the capacity to be vulnerable and to take risks and just i mean you're trying to be the uist version of you in whatever you write 
um but there's so much i think especially with writing it takes so long before it ever reaches people that i feel like i'm not used to the concept of people reacting to it and there's so much like you can give it for feedback you can rewrite it as much as you want but there's always going to be like some things that you don't you subconsciously hold back while you're writing it because you're afraid of whatever kind of um judgments and so being as vulnerable and as deeply vulnerable like deeply like it's not just like i can be this vulnerable but i have to be this vulnerable like it's a difference there's there's a spectrum <laughs> of vulnerability so that just being able to power through it and just being the youest version of you no matter what like the whole purpose should be and that's true for me with all creative pursuits right now where the idea is just just do just you do you bro just do what you want to do stop thinking about what people are going to think about it just do it uh, and take pride in the fact that you did it it's really hard to be proud of your own work and i think that that's something that we need to learn how to do and consciously work on learning how to do because you have to be proud of shit you did you did it imagine you were struggling so much to do it and you did it that's really cool and secondly i think um secondly i think another challenge right now is the thing is right now i'm trying to work on a story that's very closely um related to my life but that makes it really difficult to be objective about um making it good also um and i think that overall kind of leads into this thing of wanting like the best writing they'll always say that the best writing is the stuff that when you write what you know or when you write about your own experiences and when you write um something that's really really true for you um and how to balance that with something that's genuinely entertaining and engaging and affecting for other people also um which it requires But objectivity which you can't always have as only one person um so But yeah. like actually uh, like i recently watched uh, the thr's writers round table and like uh, uh this round table i think which uh, had a uh, tom ford and uh, pedro almodovar and other uh, people so when tom ford uh, told that like when he wrote a uh, nocturnal animals uh what he thought like uh, i am writing uh, a part of myself uh, in the script and like uh, one of the character is like uh, my uh, is, is me like so do you uh, also feel that like in your uh, every in your every writings uh do you also put your part in that uh, character every character will be you i don't think that's something that you have to do it happens because you've written it and and it like you do no matter like even if it's a commission project even if it's come from outside it's ultimately there will be some layer of it um which is like humans are so i read this quote the other day by lin manuel miranda where he said uh, he just he just wrote like a note to people where he was just like you're indescribable like um we we writers spend our entire lives trying to capture you in frames and words but we still fall short cuz there's the words that he used out shorter but cuz there's so many layers and there's so many complexities to it to fit in that we don't actually describe you cuz you're indescribable but that's the thing there's so many layers like every time i watch a character i'm i'm like oh my god that's so me even though those characters are completely different how can all five of them be you then you are just you are you are mpd or but it's true and always be like multiple multiple there's some or the other facet of you will connect to it and then also cuz a film is such a we're creating it in a way that it depicts reality but it is limited like it's your you there is a focus to it there is a focus of a specific character arc that you're trying to achieve so you're taking one element of life and you're exhausting it um its potential till the end um but we are actually long bigger than that right we've existed for 20 25 26 30 how many 40 50 ever years so if not if it isn't the truest version of who i am right now it might be who i was 5 years ago um so you will still okay then you connect it in that way um so every character that you write will will have something or the other to do with you but having said that i think um it's equally and this comes back to the challenge that i was talking about of how to make sure that it's still like that people also still want to watch it um and not be, it's just the struggle of not getting too indulgent which is i think that the greatest you the greatest uh you i don't know whatever but a way to do that is to take a kernel or a seed of a personality trait and then exaggerate it to its fullest like i may have self doubt but i want i don't want to write a character that has self doubt i want to write a character that has the worst self doubt in the world that they're just unable to function and then take it from there i may want to write i may have some flaws but or like i'm maybe i'm a terrible person in some way i don't know but i want to write then i want to write about the worst person in the world 
like no this is a very specific example obviously not the worst <laughs> like I, but you can <laughs> basically just exaggerate it to a little bit more um this might not like the, it's the only way to approach a story there'll be a lot of content that that can still exist in the normal everyday framework also but i think this is one way i think maybe i have you're a little bit more towards the the version that exaggerates it a little bit more because that's when then you get to explore the various possible themes of it because then you love multiple characters right you won't have just one character in the show you can have like one extreme is one person and the other extreme is another person and then you kind of get to play off of how different they are um so yeah that's that's one way of 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 doing it and so you so uh, like uh it, it's it's cha- you've changed you also like you you are yeah you're just creating you sorry go ahead yeah no, no. so like just to uh, like before just wrapping this up uh I just wanted to ask you one last uh, a, r- a rapid fire question just one oh. uh yeah so which is your like a favorite movie top 3 movies just like uh, which come to your mind favorite top 3 uh this is they're not going to be but whatever a regular woman um just what uh, 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 short term 12 and three billboards and no i've missed so many <laughs> there are so many other good ones wild tales i don't know uh, uh, wild tales doesn't count since you I recommended go, it go at, i don't know no there are too many i don't like this question <laughs> <laughs> no but actually no you uh, suggested so many movies like uh, like oh inside out oh this uh yeah, short, right short term will i have watched it like inside out i have to yeah, watch it i love short term short term will i watch once a year right oh wow yeah <laughs> it really is. but again that's also you know what this word favorite is really messed up because the word favorite is something that you're willing to attach to your identity and that means it has to have some at least for me that it has to have some aspect of my personality in it but the movies that i think are the best craft in the world might not be about like women's problems with patriarchy which are all the things that i will connect like short term problem i connect with because whatever there's some emotional this thing no that, that i feel there but i don't think it's the it i'm sure there are so many others punch drunk love is such a nice movie marriage story is such a is such a good movie so you can you can i don't know how to do a favorite my favorite piece of content i i've been struggling actually to figure out an answer to this question because i have friends who um like i have a friend who is just obsessed with manchester by the sea sorry am i taking too long last no, no, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay who is uh, obsessed with manchester by the sea i think he watches it once a week and the relationship that he has with that movie i've told him i i feel the between jealousy and envy the one that's allowed the one that's the positive one <laughs> where you are happy that they have it but you also want it i feel that too because he has such a strict powerful relationship with that movie where he knows all the lines and he'll just talk about it all the time and i want that with some piece of content i want to have some piece of content that i'm willing to put as a poster in my bedroom um but it's really hard to choose but i think as time is going we're getting because i've watched and i also think it needs rewatch value then if you want it to be your favorite right because so then there's so many movies that i think are fantastic and they affected me so deeply when i saw it but am i going to watch it again i don't know it was so hectic i might not watch <laughs> i don't like movies that give me headache <laughs> um so yeah so far bojack is the one piece of content that is very very close to being my favorite um but but don't quote me on it because i can change my <laughs> Uh, so uh, ma'am thank you so much for do, uh, doing this uh, like with me what, sorry what's your favorite oh, <laughs> oh okay my favorite like what comes to my head uh, oh wow uh, it's difficult but uh, mommy by zaver dolan uh, it, it just blew me out like it, it was just like what the fuck is i just watched uh then minari minari uh, yeah. i just watched it uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's sorry it's your favorite yeah like uh, one of the favorite last years uh, and yeah, also the, the, the disciple yeah. i was going to say the, the disciple. disciple i forgot to say the disciple i was scared to say it cuz i watched it by illegal means so i mean it's not but when it comes in theaters we'll watch it probably but oh my god the disciple the disciple exactly is i think it's one of the best movies i've seen in the past 10 years but is it my favorite cuz i don't feel personally represented in it in as deeply as i can be personally represented but it's but i don't know like like i just connected to that film because like it was a story of a loser 
like uh, yeah. not many stories are, are like of a, of a a loser but like it was just like the end like just shook me like i i expected this uh uh, uh from chaitanya tamane like uh, from his previous film the court uh, which like he just uh, uh, had a still camera and just like yeah. he, uh, he ended it uh, just like that and like yeah. It, yeah actually and this film also like i actually felt better like uh, and even like i, I uh, thought uh, the disciple was way better than uh, court like I, i think court was uh, right. like uh, it's a it's a thematic know. thing it's a subjective difference the, the thing. material of the disciple just connects to us a lot more maybe because it's very like you said it's about a loser and it has so much to do with like relationship with craft that it feels more personal sorry but is that what you were going to say yeah actually yeah yeah uh, uh, true that actually and i uh, have like uh, go go ahead sorry no no say say yeah what? yeah actually like uh, i just like connected uh, to his character like I, even like when he was like listening to all those uh, recording to uh, of his uh, like uh, uh, the, the 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 guru like i i was just like shook away like uh, uh, and i just re- rewatched that film just because uh, like i wanted to uh, listen to her recordings and like how truth was uh, like what Uh, what kind of uh, honesty was there in her uh, like recordings like yeah. it was just awesome yeah and it's such a fresh device right like normally you would say don't put vo you would say don't put so many preachy lines but they found such a smart and story specific way organic way of doing it that once you're there it's like this is super emotional all of these lines are earned and justified you must do it and i feel like that movie i've had such a such interesting debates with people who watch it who take away like completely different uh, points of view on what the ending represented and that's such a and it's the best way of having an open to interpretation ending where it's not like he left his story incomplete his story is completed the arc is very over and yet it's open mm-hmm. to interpretation aisa nahi ki story kabhi kabhi khatam hi nahi karte na story wo cheat hi kar lete hain ki ha hamari open ending hai but tumne khatam nahi kiya ye ye khatam hote hue bhi it it just sparked um so much debate i also want to mention have you seen alpha go uh, which one alpha go uh no um, it's a documentary I and i think alpha go is also very close to being one of my favorites in terms of craft and in terms of personal because uh, last thing because it's a it's a film about okay so go is this uh, game that they play in in korea and in, a, in in a bunch of places they played in europe and everything also but the story is basically it's a documentary about um and because it's a documentary i can tell you it's about they found a they are trying to there's a team in europe trying to create a computer that can play go as well as people okay <laughs> and then they have oh. a competition first of all they use a person to make that thing learn the sport that well and then they have a competition between and it's like it's such a masterclass in writing cause the emotional ordering in that movie it's like every two minutes you're like on your seat and you so you see one scene and you're like you have this one opinion on where it should end and then you watch the next scene and you have the complete opposite opinion on where it should end and the whole movie is just taking you be- like between flip flopping between those two opinions until it ends and you're like oh my god <laughs> um it's a <laughs> good uh, and and also because you asked for favorite uh, 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 parks and rec is also one of favorites and <laughs> one more thing that i can't see it any really with but it it's okay like uh, but like finally thank you so much for no like coming to my show uh, like uh, uh, it's been a like a great conversation about like i just like learned so much about writing uh, movies and like just be, uh, being fearless about like uh, owning your uh, creation owning my uh, own creation and like it, it was just like uh, eye opening to me Thank you uh, so, so much. I also had so much fun. It was it was really nice to be able to just connect with people who love things that you love and just talk about. It. It's a very fulfilling soul food type conversation, and and I have very high energy and I'm very elevated right now. So thank you um, for yeah. calling me, and it was really fun. And I'm glad we could. Con- I feel like we connected uh, so much, and isn't that what we all want in lockdown? Actually, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much, and uh, goodbye. Thank you. Bye.